My name is uh, Joe Barton. I'm the congressman for the 6th District of Texas. Uh, this camp is in my congressional district. Uh, I live about hey, 30, 30 miles from here in, uh, in Ennis, Texas. Uh, I have just uh, toured the facility uh, with the owners of the camp, the Assembly of God Churches of, of North Texas, uh, and officials uh, from the federal government uh, that are with the Health and Human Services uh, Department of uh, Refugee Assistance. And <clears throat> I've also uh, had the county judge and the sheriff go on the tour. Um, uh, my comments are the, the, the problem is not a problem uh, at this facility. Uh, the issue really is uh, our, our national policy that in some ways encourages uh, these young men and women, and they're between the ages of 13 and 17, uh, to come into this country illegally and then uh, be allowed to stay while their uh, asylum status or refugee status uh, is being determined. But uh, that's an issue to be settled in Washington. Uh, given the disagreement between people like myself and, and the president, it's not an issue that we're going to settle anytime soon. Uh, there, as we speak, there are a little over 400 um, uh, undocumented aliens in this camp. They're going to receive uh, later uh, an, as many as an additional 200. But the 21-day time period starts from last Friday. So within three weeks from last Friday, uh, this, this camp will, will be deactivated. And um, uh, I'm very appreciative of the way the camp's being run by all of the uh, local personnel. I'm appreciative of Sheriff Brown and the security job that he and his deputies are doing. I'm appreciative of the county commissioner's court, and the county Bush, and the efforts that they're making to make sure that uh, we, we cooperate with uh, this activity. So, Congress, Congress, money, if you would, uh, we understand that you had expressed some, some disagreement with the idea of having this camp and the, this facility here for this minor, uh, in, in the sense that. Is there enough security? Were you satisfied with what you saw inside? Well, when you when you, there's going to be a media tour tomorrow. When you go through tomorrow, uh, the young people they've come into this country illegally, uh, but they they are not a threat to Ellis County. They, uh, there's one adult sponsor for every eight children, plus all of the security that uh, Sheriff Brown, his deputies have provided. Um, in the history of these types of temporary facilities in Texas, uh, uh, in the last several years, only three people have attempted to, to leave the camp. So uh, it is, it initially was a, a serious uh, consideration, a concern, but after talking to the sheriff and to the uh, operators of the camp, uh, I don't think there's a problem with with people trying to leave the camp and, and commit some sort of a criminal act. I don't think that's going to be an issue. Now, on the national level, you spoke about national. This would be addressed in Washington, and I think you're absolutely well, right. Well, have, we have an incentive. If you come into the, you come across the border, the, these folks did not try to escape the Border Patrol. They turned themselves in, and they're given 72 hours to be processed. Uh, and if they can show that they have a, what's called a, Credible fear of persecution, they're allowed to stay in the country till they're given a court hearing, and so uh, those court hearings can take months, years, and in that interim, they they are allowed to be released in, into the custody of a sponsor. In most cases, that sponsor is some relative who's already here, uh, hopefully legally, and uh, but it can be a church sponsor. So this is a way to get into the country, turn yourself in, and then be allowed to stay uh, 
and until we change that system, we're going to have this problem. And that's not something to be solved here. It has to be solved by legislation uh, and, and a president who's willing to enforce our border uh, uh, border enforcement laws. Congressman, walk us through what you saw today, please, since we aren't able to go in and you're church camp facility. It, uh, uh, it's not designed for any kind of a, uh, a security situation. Uh, it's a church camp. What did you do? What did you see? Uh, we church walked church? around and uh, uh, the, the uh, young men and women, some of them were out exercising, some of them were going to eat lunch, some of them are, uh, they, they have uh, some sort of a study period. Uh, there's there's a uh, a clinic if they need health care, but the, it, it's basically uh, there's one adult for every eight of the uh, uh, teenagers, and uh, they're just doing routine kind of exercises and stuff out in the sunshine if they're not inside eating or, or studying. Were you able to talk to me? This we are not. We were not supposed to. Uh, obviously, being a congressman, I violated that. And, uh, uh, they're they're young people. Um, most of them are young men. They're 28 young ladies, and uh, the rest are men. Uh, they're teenagers, and they're, they're they want to be friendly, to be frank. Would they tell you? Did any of them talk about where they came from or no, circumstances? No, I didn't have any kind of extended conversation. Just hello, uh, welcome, things like that. Congress. We were asked not to engage, and I did honor that. But I did speak to some if they spoke to me. When we spoke to you last week when you first arrived, you talked about having just additional conversations. Can you tell us any other um, communication you've had you know, with uh, the federal government or anyone else just about this particular issue? Well, I've, I've had one direct conversation with the Secretary of Health and Human Services uh, I've had some conversation with the uh, uh, Baptist Children's Family Services nonprofit organization with the owners of the, this particular camp, the North Texas Assembly of God. Uh, I've talked to some of the other congressmen uh, in Washington about proposed remedies, uh, but that will have to occur in, in, in the next Congress. That, you know, we're about to get out for first session this week. We won't go back to mid-January. Um, everybody in Congress is up for election this year, and there's a presidential election, third of the Senate. So a, a legislative fix to this isn't going to occur until until the next Congress, the next president. Congressman, the spokesperson from the Health and Human Services Department in San Antonio expressed concern about budget money for these camps to keep them running. He said that there may not be enough money and they may have to go to Congress. If they do come to Congress to ask for more funds for these type of camps, what what would be your response? What would you say? My answer would be no. Um, that just exacerbates the problem. I mean, we've got homeless in Ellis County. We've got taxpayers that are going to have to borrow money to pay their taxes in April. Um, I have human compassion for the youngsters that are in this camp but they came into this country illegally. In many cases, they paid thousands of dollars to individuals or organizations uh, for the express purpose of bringing them into the country illegally. Uh, I'm not gonna facilitate that for voting more money to make it easier for more people to come and be housed here. That's not a solution, it's not. I know there's a 21 day limit. Is there any chance at all that this could be extended past 21 days no. or reopened in the future? No. None. No. This, this is a 21-day uh, operation, and uh, then it will stop the uh, Health and Human Services contracts around the country. They don't have to be in Texas uh, because of a number of issues, accessibility, local ge ge geographical nearness to the border. Uh, they chose this site, and again, from a just from an operational standpoint, the, the directors of the camp and the uh, Assembly of God uh, Church has has done an outstanding job. One thing that's been 
talked about is uh, they can't be charged up to $500 a day per child. This church camp is charging the same rate they would charge if they had one of their church members come for a retreat. I'm not going to tell you what that number is, but it is a lot less than $500 a day. So, so the Assembly of God is, is, is treating this like they would uh, any group that wanted to use their facility. They're not trying to make some huge profit off of this. But it's not like we're going to be sitting back here saying March. No. This, you, won't, you won't have me hold another press conference in front of the Lakeview uh, uh, Assembly of God church camp. There, there will be other temporary facilities dependent on the influx on the border. There are facilities on the border that are permanent to house uh, these teenagers, but because of the number of increase, they made a decision, which I support, to, to look for temporary shelter because it's less expensive in the short run. To go to his question, instead of building a new facility that would take years and cost tens of millions of dollars, they're contracting with facilities that are already here uh, at, at as minimal a cost as is possible. And, and you know, again, I don't agree with the law that allows this to happen, but I respect the, the, uh, the way it's being implemented in the sense that it is compassionate and it is done uh, through faith-based facilities and at as low a cost as possible. What happens to kids at the end of the day? They'll go to another temporary facility unless they're processed and, and given to the uh, uh, custodial care of a sponsor. Uh, most of them, if if they show up for their court hearing, will be remanded back to the country of origin. But a lot of them won't show up. And one of the one of the fallacies in the current law is there's really not a penalty. Uh, it's a different penalty. Did you check with Chris before this morning that they may be using the Department of Defense facilities for this camp? That you'd have to refer that to them. That that's a possibility on a space available basis. The Secretary of Health and Human Services has been in contact with the Secretary of Defense, and again, that that is a cost-effective way to do it if the facility space is there. Okay. Thank y'all. Yes. I'm, I'm, as far as the, the contractor PCFS, I have no complaints whatsoever. And you guys are still providing security for yes, the facility? Yes, 24-7, for the outer perimeter, not for inside. Has the Fed ever been able to do about what is going to happen when it comes to the expenditures that you can come That was That was discussed in our first meeting up there, 21 days and they're out. It's That's the way the, the law reads. Well, that's exactly right. And Sheriff, I mean, if there's a... Over 500 kids already coming into your county, 700 of we were told that that would be the final up, number. Up to 700 with them coming in going. And uh, that would be, did they tell you when are they going to, the 700 total will be arriving? I mean, no. That, and when they have movements, they let me know. Okay. If, if you would, just since we're all just kind of now getting yeah. the cameras up and going, um, if you could kind of backtrack a little bit and just talk about your role in providing security and how that's going. Okay, we're, we are outer perimeter for the concerns of the citizens of Ellis County. We have no interior security that is left all up to BCFS. They've done a great job. They're a squared away company. I have no concerns with this operation. What does, what does, uh, I upset him. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to upset you. <laughs> <laughs> what do you expect today? Do you today. expect any more immigrants to, to arriving today or what, what else will be happening today? Uh, we'll continue our patrols as we have. That's what I can tell you at this point. You haven't been told whether the rest of the kids will be coming, whether today or in the next few days yet? No, I haven't. Okay. There was two buses in last night, and I haven't heard of any today. Last week in a conference, you, in a press conference, you mentioned that you wanted to make sure that the residents of Ellis County were, were not afraid that nothing was going to be affecting in the regular life, that everything was going to go on snow and more. So far, you feel like it's the same way. Every, every police officer, every deputy that's out here are on their off-duty time. Many of them work off-duty jobs. It's just another off-duty job for them. The citizens of Ellis County still have the same amount of deputies, the same deputies that patrol every shift, and everything is, is normal within the county as far as patrols. If you could just explain what the patrolling entails here. 
You said perimeter. What does that mean? We're we're outside the housing unit. We we do have it surrounded with multiple officers um, like that that like just. No, they're they're sitting in vehicles. They have they they bring their personal vehicles and they park and they have an area to watch. Um, and I apologize again, but we're now rolling. Could you please just tell me one more time, um, in terms of patrols, what you have here, and you said uh, in terms of citizens of Ellis County. Well, I'm not. I won't discuss our security inside there. How we have it set up, I won't discuss that. But as far as Ellis County goes, uh, these are all off-duty uh, local law enforcement, be it police, constable's office, sheriff's office. Uh, they're all off duty. The regular shifts are on within the sheriff's office. There is no uh, interruption in service. I want to start with the first question of what your reaction was when you found out about anywhere from 500 to 700 unaccompanied children, as they're legally defined, were coming to Ellis County. Well, personally, um, dating back two months you know i personally aside from my relationship with our church have been trying to find a way that with the irc to help with syrian refugees in okay. the metroplex and when okay. i heard that a family i believe it was a week or two ago was resettled there i emailed those folks and asked for ways that i could help um, mainly I, I just wanted to be there when they stepped out of a car to see a smiling face and a hug um, what makes that so important uh you? you know my my, Christi my, my Christianity has a huge role in that, but aside from that even, is just um, compassion for your fellow human being. Um, you know, we're in a time that, that it seems politics have taken precedence over our, our relationship, be it uh, your, your relationship in your church and, and your religion, um, but also with our neighbor, um, that there's a, um, a context of fear that prohibits you from going out and, and showing that compassion. And... Um, given those opportunities, our church has a long history with refugees um, dating back to the 40s and 50s. And so I've heard that over and over again. And now with that opportunity to do that with the Syrian refugees, it was tough. Um, there's a whole lot of politics that play into those decisions. Mm -hmm. And then when these folks from, from Central America literally landed in our, on our front doors uh, a couple miles from our houses, um, we just jumped all over that from a church and then from a personal point of view. Now, when... The news broke. Of course, there was a lot of reaction is the best way to say that. Anywhere from outrage to racism to, you know, philosophy wars to politics to even just people like you asking, how can we help? Right. What do you think about that reaction? You know, from a politics point of view... Um... I don't know if the, the words appreciate and understand are necessarily the same thing, but I can appreciate the concern. Um, the fear and the amount of fear and the response to that fear or from that fear has worried me with some of the comments that I've read that most people have all seen by now. Um, because what we've done is that my approach to life has been that uh, I serve a God that is far bigger than the boundaries of this country. Mm -hmm. um, and so if he's telling me to love my neighbor as myself and that neighbor is all of a sudden a lot closer than they have been before, um, I feel a duty to serve that person. Um, I don't want the government to get in the way of me being able to serve that, that, that person, that neighbor, but I understand that there are also laws that we need to abide by and the folks that are coming into our country need to abide by. And so it's incredibly uh, polarizing topic. I mean, you can see that, and we have seen that. Social media blows that out, out of the, the water in, in the ability for us to see the animosity on both sides sure. of the issue. Absolutely. Now, I want to ask you, um, you and how many others went this morning to volunteer at the camp? Sure. We had, um, the people that I saw immediately were about 16 people. Uh, they were from May Pearl, they were from Waxahachie, they were from Waxahachie Bible Church, Central Presbyterian Church, um, Boy Scouts, uh, Troop 232 is really, I think, how this all generated. Um, but about 16 people where I was, we were assembling bunk beds uh, in a, a covered structure. And then there was another group, I'm told, uh, inside of some buildings that were assembling them inside where, where the kids would actually sleep. Okay. Now, I have to ask this because we've heard, you know, that the camp itself had about um, a thousand beds. Um, so what makes, how is it that 
the beds are needed to be set up, if that makes sense. Right, like, yeah, I'm not sure the, the bedding situation in that, you know, if they're able to put more beds into space, you know, where it would typically be walking room or kind of common areas um, that, they're, that they're fitting those in, I'm not sure. There were, where I was, you could see lots of mobile homes or, R, or mobile RVs that were set up, be it for staff, I'm not real sure of that situation. Um, we were just told there was a need and we went to build beds uh, for kids and okay. uh, we were happy to do it. Okay, so when you were there, um, you guys, you mentioned you were just in the in a kind of a tarped area or a, a covered area right. of building these beds? It was kind of like a maintenance barn. Okay, yeah. so you guys were separate from any of the, the children? Right, on my way in, so I, I drove in, checked in with the officer there at the front, and on my way in, we actually were stopped by a line of children being escorted from what I assumed were their sleeping quarters over to maybe to have breakfast. It was about 8 o'clock in the morning. Um, and so we saw them in a, in a, you know, marching in a, in a single file line, uh, looked like kids. I mean, smiles on their faces. Uh, they looked hungry. They were going to eat something. Uh, probably had just gotten a good sleep uh, for the first time in a while after being bussed up from, from no telling where. And, um, yeah, and then on the way out, uh, we saw kids on a soccer field, about 80 kids playing soccer. And then further down towards the camp, you could see um, between 100 and 150 other kids kind of outside doing outdoor activities. What does it mean to you to be able to see that, you know, from where the news broke to see these, see these, these children acting like children? It, it showed me humanity. I mean, to see that, um, and honestly, I thank God that it was in Ellis County that this was able to happen, but just to see that those kids are given a safe place um, it's out of the hustle and bustle of a downtown Waxhatchee or a Dallas-Fort Worth area. Um, they had room to move around and to be free and to be kids. I mean, it looked like recess at any junior high that you would drive by in Waxhatchee, honestly. Um, and uh, it gave me hope, I mean, really, to, to read some of the stuff. And I, I was, you know, there's a fear factor for all of us in, in different regards. Of course. Um, and I was frustrated. I was frustrated that I couldn't just run out there and, and serve and to meet those people as they were getting off a bus. Um, and then, you know, literally just yesterday at 9, 9.30 at our church, we were praying about that frustration and that uh, kind of anger that, that we didn't have a door that was open just to be out there and go serve, and there's security reasons, and we appreciate those. Uh, and then to be forwarded that email to say 8.30, show up and build a bed, uh, a huge relief. I mean, just an answer prayer uh, in, in all the ways possible, um, just to help. That, that's what we wanted to do. Okay. So um, what is it? I mean, the general public does not have access to really understanding what's going on at that camp. Um, all they have are what's being told in the media, unless right. they're able to help in some way through volunteer work at the camp. Right. So, uh, like yourself, so what is it you feel the general public really needs to understand about what's happening at that camp? The fear, and I know there that even no matter what I say and what the, the media publishes or what churches say, you know, there's going to be a fear factor out there. Um, for, for a lot of people because it's unknown. Uh, the best you can do really as the general public is drive by and look to your right or left and see, try to get a glimpse of what's going on. Right. Um, it was quiet. <laughs> I mean, very quiet, eerily quiet, just like it was if I was going out there to play basketball on any weekend throughout the year. Um, very quiet, it wasn't chaotic. Um, you know, there was a police presence, there was a, a safety, I guess, feeling, if, if you will, uh, from the police. Uh, it wasn't what I expected um, in hearing. Um, you know, even from our sheriff's office and, and really surrounding the camp, you know, I, I, I expected it to be surrounded at, at, in some way, um, but it was very calm. It was very peaceful. Uh, the one interesting thing, and, and, I, and maybe it's not interesting, we've heard over and over again from the group that's running this, is how well um, equipped they are from a professional point of view. I mean, there were adults. You could tell they were adults um, almost about every hundred yards. I mean, there was at least two people in a group that were watching what was going on. And like I said, we drove through it pretty quickly, but you could see that very obviously uh, that they were well equipped. They had a fire truck right there in the parking lot. They had you know EMS ready, um, a food truck. You know, they're very well equipped. And I think um, to, to tell the public just to let these 21 days play out and that this group that's charged of doing um, what they're supposed to do and what they've been called to do, what they feel what their jobs are to do, yeah. um, that they're handling it very well. Okay. Now, um... Were you? I know that from it's my understanding. You know, nobody is really unless you're one of those workers really supposed to be interacting with these children. Right. Were you able to interact with any of them? Or? We weren't. I mean, we uh, 
the way we drove in, I mean, you drove right to kind of this mechanical building or okay. this uh, operations building. And like I said, we stopped and, and my pastor and I, who was sitting with me, we smiled and we tried to wave. Um, but they were, you know, they had from A to B, they were being moved from one place to another and they had a goal in mind and we didn't stop though we wanted to, uh, we didn't want to disrupt the operations of that group. Uh, and even as we drove out and saw a lot of kids, uh, playing soccer and my pastor whispered over to me and he said, you know, let's just, let's just wave or honk or say, we love you. Just shout it. Um, and, and we just, we even kind of reserved ourselves from doing that. Uh, just not to, to cause you know any sort of chaos or, or uh, create disorder where they have right. very much um, a system of order going on. Right. Okay. So um, if other people want to help, how can they do so? It's my understanding, you know, you have to email the North Texas District of Assemblies of God. Right. But what happens from there? That's been and um, the kind of a short story. But 9:30 uh, today's Monday. Yesterday was Sunday. We meet for prayer at our church and. And one of the things that I offered up for prayer was, was just the PM or in the AM. Okay. It was right before our services started at okay. Central Prez, okay. and um, a group of us, including my pastor, um, were just kind of expressing the frustration that we had that we couldn't just walk out there and, and do right. something. And then last night, late, I got forwarded an email um, uh, from this Cub Scout group or this this Boy Scout group, and it said we're building beds and we need help. Um, oh and they God. said there are going to be some security issues, so we need to know who's coming. Um, and so we, I sent them the name of myself and my pastor, uh, and we showed up at 8.30, and they let us do that. Um, that has been one of the frustrating things, um, is having this kind of open door or easy access into serving. I think they're still serving. assessing needs as well. Right. They, they really are. I mean, um, just from going out there today, you see how well equipped they are. I mean, they've got food. They've got, obviously, we helped with the bedding, but they've got bedding. They've got shelter. They've got all of those kind of basic needs that right. you have. They've got guidance. They've got counselors out there. Um, all of those things are covered, and so where we as a church or a nonprofit would typically step in to go take jackets or, you know, what, they've got those things covered. So that, that, while wonderful, it does kind of help uh, aid frustration uh, on the part of the nonprofit and on yeah. the church. Um, but I think just praying and, and um, emailing your, your state representative, emailing those groups that you mentioned, um, and hoping that they will, in the next week, hopefully in the next couple days, be given opportunities that they can disseminate to the public. Um, to help. I know that um, Lakeview uh, will obviously have some needs that, that they might be able to disseminate to the public. So yeah, just keeping in tune to you guys, to the paper, to Facebook, to Twitter uh, on ways to help is probably the best thing at this time. Though it's not what the answer we always want, to, we want to be able to go, go, go. Um, it might be worth just being patient and seeing what the what the best way to respond is. Last couple questions. Sure. And I asked this one because I'm not sure if I'll be able to get a hold of uh, Nick Taylor. But sure. What was it like for you to see other children, our Boy Scouts out there, helping in a situation where at least hundreds of, 400 other, you know, children at this time right. are not, they're, they're in very unfamiliar territory. Right. What I'm hoping is that, and it was actually most of the moms and dads of the Boy Scouts okay. because it was a school right. day right. Uh, and they just found out late last night, but what I'm hoping is that these kids, I want my youth group to be able to go out there. I lead the youth group at our church, and I really want them to be able to go out there. Um, there's just to be able to help in a hands-on way. I mean, there's a lot to be said about writing a check and to donate, and to be. but to me, I mean, just the feeling this morning, and it was, I didn't have, you know, interaction or, or conversation with any of these kids or their, or their mentors or helpers, um, but knowing that what I was building with my hands would provide a bed and a pillow, um, for two kids, and we built two beds while I was there, so four kids. Um, there's nothing that can compare to that, and I hope that everybody, <laughs> it's going to be hard, but can experience that somehow through this situation. I don't know how long it'll be, if it's the 21 days or longer, or if we get another wave of 21 days, um, but just keep asking. Keep asking in ways that you can help. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to say, Rev? No, just the... Uh, um, you know, I just wish that the fear has concerned me a great deal, and some of the things that I've read, um, and that's the power of social media, you get that uh, immediately, is, is that it's the fear of the unknown. And sometimes you've got to be able to be willing to invest the time to figure out what's going on. And luckily it literally fell in my lap to where I was able to go out there and do that with my pastor and a group of, of people that I know. Um, but rely on that as opposed to people that just spit venom uh, on one side or the other. I'm not saying there's a right or a wrong issue here. It's an extremely complicated issue. Right. right. Very much but so. just, just be patient enough um, and be open-minded enough 
uh, to know that there's a purpose in all of this mm-hmm. uh, and that more than likely we're going to be asked to play a role in that purpose and when it's time that we step up and do so.